All right, growing speakers and writers. We want a rich language environment. What does that mean? It means talking, it means reading, it means watching TV. Let me just give you a little plug for television and its benefits. <laughs> if you are a longtime fan of classical education or Charlotte Mason, you might forget that we're actually living in the 21st century. <laughs> and so you might be tempted to presume that books are better than television, that ancient history is more interesting than modern, when the truth of the matter is it's all the same. It's all the same. Someday this will be ancient history to someone. The internet is fabulous. Can I just mention that again? It's like the greatest thing ever so far. Television might be the second greatest. There is something about the speed of communication, the fact that we have professional on television, professional actors delivering professionally written lines for maximum meaning that creates vocabulary acquisition unparalleled to workbooks. Because how do you learn how words work? By talking to people who use them. And actors are trained to do it better than anyone else on the planet. So don't hate on TV. Now, you might hate some TV. I never liked Barney, and that was the rage when my kids were little. I could not do it, so we didn't. Uh, but we loved Arthur. I think we have every episode memorized. It's like our favorite family show. Uh, and my <laughs> children were raised on Seinfeld. They think that's hilarious. And Katrin and I joked about it just two days ago. I said, I think a lot of your vocabulary acquisition came from Seinfeld. She says, oh, absolutely. <laughs> like, was that ever a question? <laughs> because irony, humor, this delivers meaning in ways that other forms of communication do not. So if you have a kid who's obsessing over watching, you know, the Disney video of cars, they're learning so much stuff, and you just can't believe it's true, but I'm just here to tell you that it is. Song lyrics. They teach so much. Get your teens to bring you their CDs. Sit with the lyrics. That's poetry of our age. We don't do poetry except in, well, now there's spoken word poetry, which is really popular. And there are poetry slams. Even that is more than when I was in high school. But by and large, poetry is to music, and that's what kids bond to. So listen to their lyrics, talk about them, get to know their world. A rich language environment includes all of those. I had a student when I was uh, teaching at our local homeschool co-op who was totally into film. He was a senior in high school, and suddenly he just discovered the world of cinema. And he came from a fairly conservative family, and his mother even asked me, is it OK that he's watching movies all weekend? She wouldn't let him watch movies during the week. So he would start Friday night and never leave the basement. He would just like all night, all day, all night. and. Uh, and he was in my creative writing class at our co-op. And so what we would do is we would talk on Friday, and he would tell me all the movies he was going to see. And of course, I wasn't going to watch all of them, but I had seen some of them. And then we would, on Monday, debrief. We would just have like our own 15-minute conversation about whichever one was the most important to him. The amount of understanding of literature he gained from watching films was remarkable. And it was, for me, really exciting, because my kids weren't his age yet. And I knew, OK, that's where we're going. So I just want you to sort of open up, take a deep breath. You live in the 21st century. Let's update our homeschools to like be in fashion and benefit from technology. If you have doubts, qualms, I trust you. I think you know the difference between a kid who's just really invested and someone who is covering pain. So. Trust your hunches. I'm not telling you to stop being parents, but I do want to give you permission to see value in a language-rich environment. <laughs>